वेलकम टू जेम क्यूम नॉट टू दिस वीडियो इज ऑन कोवाल एंड बॉन्डिंग पार्ट वन वीडियो एंड हियर वी आर गोइंग टू डील विद वी एस सी पी आर थियोरी एंड डिटर्मिनेशन ऑफ स्ट्रक्चर एंड स्टीरियो केमिस्ट्री ऑफ सिंपल इनऑर्गेनिक मॉलिक्यूल्स नाउ बिफोर स्टार्टिंग द फर्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ द कोवाल एंड बॉन्डिंग इज लू इज स्ट्रक्चर नाउ आई विल नॉट डील विद इट बट आई विल गिव द पी डी एफ ऑफ द बुक ऑफ लू इज स्ट्रक्चर इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स चेक इट आउट इफ यू हैव डाउट यू कैन आस्क मी इन द कॉमेंट बॉक्स सो लेट अस स्टार्ट now v v s e p r theory stands for valence shell electron pair repulsion okay now the rules which helps to determine the structure is that number one rule states that the central atom of the molecule should be chosen at first and the total number of its outer electrons should be counted so let us see how it is done suppose if we consider b f 3 okay central atom in this case is specifically boron then boron has three outer electrons and it gets three electrons from the three fluorine so it is three so total valence electron around the boron is six clear now the next rule states that from electron count of the outer shells the structure of the molecules can be predicted as follows If you get number of outer electrons to be four, the structure will be linear. That is just like this. B E C L two. Now, if you count for B E C L two, for beryllium it is two, and two contribution from the two chlorines, so it is two plus two. It will be four. Similarly, if you look into the number of outer electrons to be six, then the structure is planar trigonal, and the structure looks like this. Example of it is B F three. So b that is boron has 3 electrons and 3 electrons comes from fluorine so it makes it 6 if we go for the next one that is our 8 electron count tetrahedral comes and the structure looks like this and c h4 where carbon is the center atom so it has 4 valence electrons plus 4 electrons coming from the hydrogen to make it 8 electron count if we observe for 10 electron count outer electron count specifically then the structure will be trigonal bipyramidal that is these two atoms are above and below the plane and these three atoms are in the plane with this particular central atom example of this is pcl5 now if we do the electron count we can see that the electron comes to be as 10 remember it now if we go for 12 then the structure is octahedral and the example of it is sf6 for sulfur the valence electron count is 6 plus for fluorine which are 6 in number 6 it gives us 12 similarly for the last one it is pentagonal bipyramidal where these two particular atoms are above and below the plane that is which is given here this one and this one and the others are in plane and forming a pentagon structure So I have seven. Iodine has seven electrons in the valence shell, and seven fluorine gives seven electrons. So there are total fourteen electrons. Now, the third rule states that whenever there are vacant sites, suppose you see that there are not the same number of atoms present as that of the, you know, the outer electrons, then what will happen? They should be occupied by lone pairs, and the lone pairs occupies greater space than the bond pairs. Thus, interaction. are of the order lone pair lone pair interaction is greater than lone pair bond pair interaction and it is greater than bond pair bond pair interaction so if we do few examples then we can understand so let us see suppose ammonia so first we will do the electron count now for ammonia nitrogen has 5 electrons in the valence shell plus the three electrons given from hydrogen so there is 8 so h refers to tetrahedral geometry right the geometry is tetrahedral remember this is a geometry now if we try to draw in tetrahedral structure then three positions will be occupied by hydrogen and one position will be left out that particular position will be occupied by a lone pair and ultimately our structure will be having three lone pair bond pair repulsion how come this will repel this one 
again this will repel this one this will repel also this one right the shape will be trigonal pyramidal because it is not perfectly tetrahedral lone pair is not observed while observing the shape so it will be trigonal pyramidal now if we see for water molecule then the central atom in this case is oxygen right so oxygen has six electrons plus two electrons from h then it comes to be as eight the geometry or the more specifically the structure should be tetrahedral but it is not actually looking like tetrahedral while drawing because it has two hydrogens and the two positions are being occupied by the lone pairs so it has a shape of bent v or angular so it is v shaped or angular shaped or bent shaped so vacpr can tell us the structure but not the specific shape clear now clf3 this is the central atom 7 plus 3 3 from fluorine to give us 10 so its structure should be trigonal bipyramidal bipyramidal right now remember from the next cases bipyramidal will be written as bp okay bpy so let us see next one so in this case what happens there are three chlorines right so three chlorines are occupying like this and this comes over like this up and down but this structure is not good why it is not good because there is six lone pair bond pair repulsion so we need a solution so another structure was proposed like this with two lone pairs present in the equatorial plane and if you watch it carefully then there will be four lone pair bond pair repulsion and another is lone pair lone pair which is 120 degree so this is good and nice right so this structure was supported and ultimately the shape comes to be as t shaped remember this this is important in order to overcome the repulsion they have taken this decision to construct this structure and this structure was about it next we will go for i3 minus okay now remember always in a tbp structure the lone pair should always occupy the equatorial site in order to minimize the steric repulsion so if we construct for this one c i3 minus we can write it as i i2 minus now for iodine it is 7 plus 2 iodine as attached to it plus 1 because of this negative charge if negative charge is present plus 1 if positive charge is present minus 1 so this is a tbp structure now as i have told you that the lone pairs will occupy the equatorial position so there are three lone pairs right left over so these occupies the equatorial position and the i occupies other two eyes occupies the axial positions and ultimately our shape comes to be as linear remember this one i3 minus is linear in shape now if we come to sf4 then 6 plus 4 is equals to 10 tbp structure and here we have four places and another place requires to be occupied by lone pair so lone pair in the equatorial plane and the two fluorines here and one fluorine up one fluorine down so ultimately the shape comes to be as seesaw or you can write it as k shaped okay now we will go for the next one which is xc f5 minus so this has eight electrons in the valence shell plus five electrons from fluorine and the negative charge gives us one so it is 14 so the structure should be pentagonal bipyramidal right so 
so remember as i have told you that the equatorial positions should be occupied by lone pair in case of tbp but in this case axial positions will be occupied by lone pair remember this one for tbp equatorial planes will be occupied by lone pair and for this case axial positions will be occupied by lone pair if present so what will be the structure it will have this kind of structure this is the plane which i am drawing having the fluorines with the pentagon structure so this is the structure of the pentagon and the two lone pairs are occupying up and down and the structure is pentagonal planar structure because lone pairs are not considered while considering the shape so we can write it as pentagonal planar structure pentagonal planar clear now in the next case we will see with xef4 so see here xef4 has 8 electrons plus 4 electrons from fluorine to give us octahedral in octahedral lone pairs always occupies the trans position in order to minimize the steric repulsion and here in the equatorial planes we will observe the lone pair so it will look like this one lone pair here another lone pair here here is a fluorine here is another fluorine up and down has one one fluorine so this is a plane and this is the structure so this is a basically square planar structure square planar shape this is the structure and this is the shape okay in the next part we will see br f5 so see this one bromine has 7 electrons plus 5 from fluorine to give 12 octahedral and it will look like this br since one lone pair so it will come in the axial position so here is the lone pair and here is the fluorine now there is four lone pair bond pair repulsion bond pair is that present in the equatorial plane and this has no interaction clear so it is due to this that four f atoms lie above the plane containing central bromine atom thus the structure is distorted square pyramidal what happens since there is a repulsion so this this all these fluorines go up along with bromine so it looks like a distorted square pyramidal shape remember this these are exceptions and should be remembered all time distorted square pyramidal now we will go for the next rule which is the last rule if we seem to have some sigma bond or pi bond this particular rule comes into play now the multiple bonded rule states that each sigma bond contribute to plus 1 while each pi bond contribute to minus 1 to the total electron count of the central atom whenever oxygen and sulfur are terminal atoms they will form double bond with central atom remember this oxygen and sulfur whenever present it will form double bond whereas nitrogen and phosphorus are terminal atoms when they form triple bonds with central atom so the multiple bonds occupy greater space than the single bonds when we will do example we will understand this so let us see for co2 we can understand that carbon is the central atom whereas oxygen is the terminal atom so there will be one sigma bond and one pi bond so carbon has four electrons plus for one for two oxygens right there will be one sigma bond and minus one pi bond ultimately we will get four and the structure will be linear and it will look like this that is double bond o double bond o next one in case of sulfur dioxide this sulfur has a contribution of 6 plus 2 oxygen so 2 oxygen will have number of electrons contributed as plus 1 for sigma bond and minus 1 for pi bond to ultimately give us 6 so here the structure will look like this this and another position occupied by the two electrons or the lone pair okay now the next one is x e o2 f2 okay in this case 8 plus 2 1 minus 1 for oxygen sigma and pi plus 2 of the fluorine to give 10 that is tbp structure trigonal bipyramidal structure so as i have told you lone pair will be occupied in the equatorial position 
double bond will also occupy in the equatorial position and the fluorines will be up and down and the structure is TBP and shape in this case is K-shaped or seesaw. Double bonds and lone pairs occupy greater space and hence they should be kept at equatorial plane. Always remember this. Now you should try for this particular molecule XeO3. Try it on your own self. What will be the structure and what will be the shape? Now we will go for XeOF4. Now Xe contributes 8, right? Similarly, so let us start writing. 8 plus for 1 oxygen 1 minus 1 plus 4 fluorine it gives 12 so it is octahedral right and we start drawing now remember lone pair and double bond are placed at positions trans with respect to each other in order to minimize the steric repulsion so it will be drawn like this that is this position occupied by lone pair this position by double bond here is fluorine here is fluorine here is fluorine here is another fluorine. So this is having a shape of distorted square pyramidal. Next, our structure comes for H2SO4. Now see here, sulfur is our central atom. So it has 6 electrons plus 4 oxygen, so 1 minus 1 plus 2 equals to 8 which is a tetrahedral structure so remember in order to account for the two hydrogens present there will be two sulfur oxygen single bond so ultimately it will look like this and the structure is tetrahedral no distortion shape is also tetrahedral now the last one is that 6 plus 4 1 minus 1 plus 2 for this minus 2 right so it will give us tetrahedral and ultimately same as the above but the hydrogens are being replaced by negative sign okay so this will be O minus and this will be O minus okay so this much works for today in the next class we will see few more structures and then we will go for stereochemically active and inactive lone pairs okay so hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching. Do not forget to like, share, subscribe and comment.